glucose. Now, unless you've never taken a single biology course or been to nursing school yet or anything, I know you've heard of glucose and I know you have a basic understanding of what gluco glucose is and why we're going to run this lab. First of all, let's talk about normal ranges. Normal ranges for a healthy adult would be about 60 to 100 or so. Uh, some ranges might be a little higher, a little lower on either end, but basically we want it to be around 100 or under 100 and, and for the patient to stay alert and oriented and everything, we need it to be above 60 or 70 or so. So I'm going to say 60 to 100 or so for your normal range of glucose. Now let's talk about what glucose is. Now glucose, like cholesterol, really has a bad rap, but the problem is that we actually, we need glucose just like we need cholesterol to carry out normal functions within our body, okay? So what glucose does is it's, it's actually one of the main energy suppliers for our body. And the way that our body gets energy from glucose is through a process called oxidative metabolism. And what oxidative metabolism is, it's really the breakdown of organic nutrients and then getting them into energy, okay? So glucose, which is, it's really just a simple sugar, it's the most common nutrient to be broken down by this process. And the process by which this is broken down is called glyco glycolysis or glucose metabolism. And through glycolysis or glucose metabolism, the body produces two pyruvate molecules. Okay, and these pyruvate are needed to go into the mitochondria to carry out the Krebs cycle and produce ATP. Okay, and we know ATP is what gives us energy. So very simply put, we have, we have glucose. Glucose is broken down by glycolysis or glucose metabolism, which produces two pyruvate. These pyruvate go into the mitochondria, and within the mitochondria, this is what we need to carry out the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle produces ATP, so it's very important that we have glucose to carry out uh, cellular metabolism. And whenever we have excess glucose, that's going to be stored in the liver and the muscles as glycogen. Okay, so the excess that's, that's, that we take in that's not needed or not used through oxidative metabolism is going to be stored in the liver uh, and the muscle tissue as glycogen. Now, the main reason we're going to be running our glucose, the main we're going to, reason we're going to be checking our glucose is because of a condition that we all know as diabetes. And diabetes is characterized by hyperglycemia, which, you know, is really just elevated glucose levels. And we all know there's two types of diabetes, right? There's type 1 diabetes, which is really a, a defect in insulin secretion. And then we have type 2 diabetes, which is really kind of a, a, a defect in insulin action. And the concern with, with diabetes is that it really can become like a vascular issue, right? The long-term result of hyperglycemia, you know, which will result from diabetes, can lead to dysfunction of the eyes, kidneys, nerves, heart, blood vessels, everything to where it really just starts to degradate our tissues, you know, from this long-term elevated glucose level. So it's incredibly important that we assess our patient's blood glucose level when patients become sick, when they're on steroids or different things like that, their blood sugars can go up, right? Because as we get sick, we release these stress hormones, release cortisol, um, these glucocorticoids, which are going to elevate our blood sugars. Steroids really synthetic glucocorticoids that can elevate blood sugars as well. And so it's really important that we're monitoring our blood sugar levels in patients. So one thing that I always have to tell patients, family members, when, when uh, one of their family members is in the ICU, because we'll start checking their blood sugars at least every four hours, most likely. And one thing that we really need to tell family members is we're not checking this necessarily because the patient has diabetes or even an elevated glucose level right now won't necessarily indicate diabetes. What we're doing is we're just uh, making sure that due to the stress of being sick, due to, you know, the possibly fact that we're giving them steroids, that they're not um, running their blood sugar so high that they can cause these, these issues, right? So what we're going to see in a patient who has diabetes are going to be things like polyuria, polydipsia, weight loss, um, and then random blood sugars greater than 200, okay? And what we can do is we can do fasting blood sugar uh, after an eight-hour fast, and, and we want it to be under, you know, 100 for the patient. And if it's not, then we might start looking at, at the, the possibility of the patient having diabetes. So some of the reasons we're going to see elevated blood sugar levels, first of all, we talked about uh, diabetes or stress reaction, being sick. You might also see it with uh, certain pancreatic issues like an adenoma on the pancreas, pancreatitis, phaochromocytoma, so things that are going to be really releasing more uh, blood sugar. We could see a decrease in Addison's disease, glucagon deficiency, glycogen storage diseases, uh, and so those are some of the reasons we're gonna see it decrease. Now, I really want you to understand uh, glucose, and, and it's, it, the important thing is that you have to understand that it's more than just checking a blood sugar and you have to really be vigilant about checking blood sugars. One of the most 
common reasons we'd have uh, rapid response teams called in the hospital and that I'd have to respond to would be because blood sugars weren't checked when they should have been or blood sugars were checked two hours before and then a nurse gave insulin based on the blood sugars from a couple hours ago and put the patient down to a blood sugar of, of like 10 and put the patient into, you know, <laughs> these these low blood sugar kind of uh, non-responsive states. And then also we got to make sure that our blood sugars aren't getting over 400, 500, 600, uh, and that we're addressing those things very quickly. Patients cannot live in blood sugars that are extremely high or extremely low for very long without seeing very detrimental effects. So the biggest thing I want you to keep in mind is our normal levels are about 60 to 100. And we really just want to be very vigilant about this. Never give insulin if you haven't checked the blood sugar within a very short amount of time, okay? And make sure you're checking on schedule, okay? And we really want to just keep our patients safe. It's about keeping them safe and just understanding what what uh, role glucose plays in the body and then the importance of keeping it within check.